Welcome to the Love on the Go podcast, brought to you by Carolina's Matchmaker. I'm Lori Burzak, and for over 17 years, I've been helping singles find the relationship of their dreams all over the Carolinas. Along the journey, I've met so many amazing professionals and experts from various fields, and I'm excited to introduce them to you. What's my goal? I want to help you look at love and relationships in a new way and to grow in your understanding of how love works. Let's learn together how people have overcome personal obstacles and have found love, first and foremost, with themselves. The ultimate goal is realizing that you are worthy and deserving of love. Let's get started. So uh, Meryl Hunt and I were just trying to figure out how many years we've known each other. I think we came to 23 years, Meryl, is that right? Yeah, just about. (laughs) So Meryl is a dear, dear friend and um, excited to bring her on Love on the Go podcast today. Um, she's actually the owner of Connecting Kitchen, which and she's a self-taught chef and certified health coach. And she loves to connect people in the kitchen using teamwork to help people build healthy bodies and the best relationships. Welcome, Meryl. Hey, happy to be here, Lori. Good to see you. Yeah, this is great. I'm excited. Uh, Meryl has taught me so much about cooking and relationship and body image. And I've learned a tremendous amount about Meryl um, over the many, many, many years that we have been very close friends. And I've watched her build this business. And I'm even taking a private cooking class with her right now with five other women, we go to her home and we learn how to cook healthy and talk about everything to do with that. And I just, she's a phenomenal cook and I love the way she teaches. So I'll give all her socials at the end of this, but, but I really want to talk to Meryl about today is um, really how intimacy is created through cooking and right. And that's a big theme for us. In fact, during COVID, when the lockdown happened, I called Meryl in a panic saying, oh my God, what am I going to do? Like both my kids came home from college and actually one of them wasn't in college yet. The other one was, and all I could think about was I now need to cook, you know, lunch and dinner for my family. And I'm like all out of ideas before it even started. (laughs) Well, they were just there. You know, all of a sudden you're responsible for their meals, right? Right. Three meals a day, seven days a week. Nobody was going anywhere. It was pretty stressful. It was. So she gave me like a list of groceries, remember? And ideas for meals, uh, like mix and match. And I was like on my way to like a whole new journey of eating. Well, one, we helped you stock your kitchen. Yes, we did. Just to make it easier. Yeah. But the the, um, results of the journey that you didn't see coming yeah, how excited your husband was <laughs> and your kids when you were putting this amazing food on the table. You weren't stressed out anymore about what to cook. That's right. Right. And More the bored. love that was coming back to you mm-hmm. from your family. So, yeah, they were really excited. Beautiful thing. It really was. It took all the stress off. So People, people say that the way to a man's heart is through their stomach. I think it's also the way to a woman's heart, FYI. So I, w- I want to talk about that. Like what, let's talk about what happens when your crush or your love partner cooks for you and kind of what that, what, what is created? Well, I think first of all, whoever is being cooked for is like, wow. Somebody went to a lot of trouble, they thought about it, they planned. It just makes the recipient feel special, right? So already you're off to a great start. I mean, I don't know if you'd recommend it for a first date, but definitely no. as you establish establish the relationship, it's just a great idea. Food brings people together. It's sensual. It involves all the senses. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's just a beautiful way to connect thus the connecting kitchen. Exactly. And what, okay. So what would you recommend somebody cook for their boyfriend or girlfriend for a first, for a first cooking experience? Let's say Uh, somebody who's maybe not that comfortable in a cook, in a kitchen. Yeah. So first of all, you can do it together. So Mm -hmm. it doesn't take some of the pressure off. 
right? It's I love like, that. I am cooking for you. It's like, yep. hey, why don't you come over and we'll have some fun and make this together. So it's not, you know, such a big deal. It's more like, hey, this is going to be fun. Mm-hmm. We have to eat anyway. It's mm-hmm. a great way to have some conversation. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think what you make depends on your cooking level. You definitely want to keep it simple. Um, mm-hmm. I love chicken piccata for some reason. Okay. Um, or fish piccata. If you don't eat meat, um, just goes over pasta. It's just warm and yummy and easy. And it looks more impressive maybe. Um, so that's got what the white one, do you have to bread it? Um, it's in or like you... egg batter. Okay. Um, with little yep. flour. It's not really breaded. It's like okay. really yep. breading. And- um, so see lemon juice, you can add some white wine if you want, but it's just butter and olive oil, um, lemon juice, but it just has capers, a capers, C- capers, yeah. like capers. Yeah. All right. Um, you know, you should feel out the person a little bit and see what it is that they actually like to eat, you know, dietary restrictions, mm-hmm. food allergies, things like that. Can play yeah. Too. Yeah, exactly. I think that sounds great. So you could do that over pasta. You could do it over rice, probably, if you wanted to, if that's yeah. easier for you, right? Yeah, I do okay. it over spinach greens, too, wilted greens. Okay. You know? Um, and it's like, and- you know what? It's not, like, so heavy. So if there's, like, you know, like a makeout session afterwards or something, you're not going to feel, like, too full. Yeah. It, I mean, it's just it a mind. beautiful meal. Yeah. I love that idea. Okay. Yeah. So that's one idea. Do you want okay. some other ideas? Or? Yeah, throw us another a couple of other ideas. Yeah. yeah. What about like the old steak and potato meal? I think it's excellent. Okay. You know, roasted right. chicken. Those are so easy. Okay. You know, just, they warm you. A lot of people have. Um, so food memories are very powerful. So mm. that's another really big thing about cooking together. You're already creating a fabulous moment. Mm. Um, that you can, that you've shared and that you can remember and that you kind of tuck away yeah. um, in your heart. Yeah. Um, so, you know, foods like steak and chicken and, you know, mm-hmm. a lot of people have like homey, you know, good feeling memories about comfort foods like that. And they're super easy to make. Right. And just, I guess, you know, have a couple cutting boards and a couple of knives and, and I've even had clients go to like the farmer's market and they go shopping together as part of the experience and they go back. Right. Yes. And they start shopping together, have a beverage, enjoy, put on some music. And it's not about like slicing all the carrots perfectly, or, you know, it's not about like anything like that. It's really just about, like you said, creating memories, having fun, dancing in the kitchen, just right. I'm, yeah, I'm so getting music this is perfect great. image. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Just let, let go a little, yep. right? have a great time and just yeah. enjoy. Yeah. yeah. There's create, no judging creative. panel. That's you right. Know, waiting there for you. So <laughs> do the best you can laugh about it. Sometimes you burn things, right. good memories too, because it's right. funny afterwards. That's funny. Um, you know, Kevin and I laugh because I try to make him a chocolate mousse, like when we first started dating and I had no idea. I pulled out like the joy of cooking and you know how hard that book is. And wow. I tried to make a chocolate mousse and it turned into like more of like a chocolate milkshake. It was delicious, but <laughs> we still laugh about that today. Yeah. We, 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 we finally think of the chocolate mousse story. So, and the fish, which was a nightmare. Um, but uh, I think that's great. Okay. So what about, you know, garlic or, you know, the messy foods like spaghetti? Do we really need to stay away from that? What's, what's your opinion? Um, you know, I think a lot of that is in our heads as to okay. what makes sense. Maybe you don't want to go so heavy on the garlic. Right. That could be a turnoff. Some people yeah. process garlic better than others. Like okay. I can eat garlic. You wouldn't know I ate it. My husband mm-hmm. is like with him for three days. So, yep. Understood. you know, it's probably safe to stay away from lots of garlic raw. Okay. I mean, and okay. there's so many different choices, you know, okay. I love to do stir fries and stuff like that. Cause those are quick and easy. That might be like a little bit higher skill level. Okay. So, um, okay. I, I would recommend a lesson with me first before you attempt that, if that's not something yeah. that you know how to do. I think that's but, a great idea. Also maybe have some like crudite or something out on the, the counter that you can kind of munch on while you're cooking. So you don't get hangry. Yeah. So that's, that's a really good point too, Mm -hmm. because some, 
Um, one thing that people miss is that a lot of how we feel inside mm -hmm. and what gives us the energy and how we relate to other people has lots to do with what we eat. Mm. So as the health coach, um, yes. when I wear that hat, yeah. you know, I try and help people eat healthier foods like the crudite, the chopped mm -hmm. up vegetables, maybe with some hummus instead of junkier foods that can, you know, um, drag you down can lead to sugar crashes and things like that. So that's something to keep in mind, keep it healthy if you can. Yeah. Even sometimes people do like cheese and crackers, which for some folks that's fine, but there's a lot of people that are lactose intolerant and it kind of makes them a little bloaty. I yeah, think these or, are important things to think about if you're, you're dating. You yeah, don't want to go there. People are, a lot of people are gluten-free. Yeah. But, you know, yeah. So gluten has, so cheese and crackers, you know, mm. Um, you might want to have some other options. Yeah, that I I think that's a great idea. Okay, wonderful. I would I thought it would be fun to talk about your your romantic origin story. You've you've been with your husband Ron, a dear friend of ours as well, for how many years now? Yeah, thirty two years, and then we dated for five years before that. So it's okay. really thirty seven. Wow, um, and it's a long time. Yeah, I have a failed meal story. The first time I cooked for him, I decided to make brisket. <laughs> Being right. a Jewish girl, that was like one of the few things that was a constant on our table and things right. like that, you know, for holidays. So I thought, okay, I'll do that. Well, it was like shoe leather. Right. It was so tough. I didn't put enough liquid in there. <laughs> you know, I was like 21 years old. Right. And um, it was terrible. But you know what? He loved it. <laughs> Turns out he likes his meat extra chewy. Um, he just loved me, right? I mean, mm. he just appreciated the effort. Yeah. And it's been a constant thing all along. You know, not mm -hmm. every meal is so fantastic or takes me so much time. You know, sometimes it's just quick, you know, when the kids are all in the house, you know, you sometimes just need to get dinner on the table. Yeah. But the appreciation for the meals that I created. And the sort of enduring love mm -hmm. for being nourished and nurtured. You know, people don't realize how powerful that is. You know, it starts yeah. when you're a little kid and your mom is nourishing you or your dad mm -hmm. or grandma or who's ever cooking for you. Mm -hmm. That is an important message. It says, I love you. I care about you. So, and I obviously I felt that same way about my children. So getting a home cooked meal on the table was super important for yeah. me, bring yeah. the people together, you're sharing moments and it sort of weaves this, you know, when you cook with love, you're giving your love, you know, it's just a love thing. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, of course we had meals like on Valentine's day one year, we just closed the door to our bedroom. You know, mm -hmm. I brought like a card table in, lit the fire, and we had something so simple, like a loaf of bread with cheese, some like grilled shrimp, strawberries dipped in chocolate, and a bottle of champagne. And that was Sweet. it. Right? Sweet. So easy. Everybody can do that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And our kids do not knock on the door, whatever. <laughs> Meryl and Ron have three three grown, grown adults now, grown young adults. And 32 years. Let's talk about longevity and how do you get through it? I mean, how do you look at the arc of a relationship and how do you, you know, there's a lot of people that don't make it that long. Did yeah. you know at the beginning that this was going to be it? Like, how did you sort of, how do you get through conflict? Oh no. So, I mean, I, the attraction was there right away. It was a strong attraction. So that always helps. Mm -hmm. um, but my husband used to joke that, um, I wasn't sure he was the right one until 10 years after we were married. So, <laughs> you know, it's hard to know. It's always work, mm -hmm. right? If you think it's going to be easy, like once you have that wedding or mm -hmm. whatever commitment, yeah. whatever your um, commitment is, yeah. Um, if you think that it's going to be just like a piece of cake, you know, life is going to throw curves at you. Kids mm -hmm. add a lot of stress to a marriage, even though they're the best thing ever. So I want to make sure I say that too. Mm -hmm. um, you need to work a hundred percent to give to the other person. And then you end up getting it back. But mm -hmm. I mean, that is really the secret. Right. Sometimes you're going to hate them. Sometimes you're not going to feel like loving anybody. You mm -hmm. know, you're going to have down times yourself where you might not feel so great inside. Mm -hmm. um you might have 
health challenges or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. I mean, you just, you have to remember that this is the person I chose. I love them. And you got to work hard at communicating, showing respect for them. Yeah. Um, And that actually is what I love about the kitchen. Because Mm -hmm. when you're cooking together, you're actually communicating in a way that isn't really about any specific issues. So you Mm -hmm. really learn to work together. You, You learn to respect each other. You're focused on the goal of getting the meal together. I mean, it's just a together. It brings yeah. people together. It's just a beautiful thing. Well, and if you think about it, I agree with you. Um, if the whole idea about marriage is always thinking about your partner and what can I do next? If you're both thinking that way about each other, if you're thinking, okay, what's the next meal going to be? I'm going grocery shopping for my partner and me. You know, I want to nur- I literally want to nourish my partner. Yeah. You know, that's what this really is all about. And I really want to nourish my relationship. That's right. Exactly. So when my husband calls to say what's for dinner tonight, it's not necessarily, and even when I'm like, I don't know, you tell me what's for dinner, take out sushi. Um, But it's not necessarily like, what are you, what are you making for me? It's more like, I'm looking forward to the evening spending tonight with you. You know, I know that we're going to be eating something. What do you have in mind? Do you want me to pick something up? I mean, that's really helpful, especially as a, you know, a working mom, like it's just being thoughtful around all of it. Um, And, you know, some people I've talked to a lot of clients who will say, you know, I usually food prep on Sundays. I mean, that's a very adulting organized way of planning out your week. Um, Other people are more like European style where they'll go every day and buy the fresh food for their, their evening um, meal. So it's just interesting. And when you start, I think that that's a great conversation to have when you first start dating some, somebody, you know, like, what is, what are your meal? What do your meals look like? What time do you eat dinner? You know, what do you eat during the day time? Mm -hmm. Um, You know, I had one client once say to me, you know, I just wasn't that into him. He's does a lot of fast food. He's not that healthy. And like, that's what I'm all about is really healthy eating. So, you know, sort of keep that in mind too, when you're out there dating, because the way you take care of your body is, you know, all that's all we have is our vessel and how we take care of ourselves the bed to the best of our ability. Right. So um, when you meet somebody who is not taking care of themselves and eating gross food, it's like, how long will that person be around? I mean, are they, you know, are they in it to win it with this lifetime of living as long as they can in a very healthy manner? And, um, and I think it's important to note. You know, so I, you know, I hear, I hear that a lot from people as they want to meet somebody who takes care of themselves. And that's where you start is taking and nourishing your body to the best that you can. And it starts in the kitchen and it starts, it starts in the kitchen. Yeah. Um, But I also, I love what you said, because um, the biggest thing that contributes to a successful, sexy and a successful relationship is the communication. Mm. Right. So you mentioned communicating how is dinner going to work for us? Yes. Right. When you're in a relationship, who's going to do the cooking? And um, I have a lot of clients and their their husbands love to do the cooking mm-hmm. you know, or their boyfriends or whoever the yeah. partners are. Yeah. Um, and, you know, that's totally fine, too. Just as long mm-hmm. as you can talk about it, agree Um, values is so important in relationships, you know, as you're always talking about and being healthy is one of them. So, you know, you want, if you agree on food and how it's going to be made or what you're going to pick up or where, or how often you're going to eat out. Um, I do eat out too. Yeah. (laughs) I love to eat out. It's so fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So that's a really good point that you mentioned that communication is just so important. 32 years of marriage, obviously conflict arises. What how do you handle conflict in your relationship? Well, I'm one of those people who it has to come out. Mm -hmm. You know, if something's bothering me, something's upsetting me, um, I always feel like we need to talk about it. And Mm -hmm. that has proved very helpful um, for our long, stable, really strong marriage Mm -hmm. Um, when something's bothering you don't let it fester because we all end up with this dialogue in our head that you know makes the issue bigger rather than resolving it Mm -hmm. chances are your husband or partner 
does not even know this is an issue for you. Yeah. Right. So if you don't tell them, you're never going to get that reaction. You know, they're not going to apologize. They're not going to make it up to you. They're not going to try and change their behavior. Um, so you really need to, in a nice way, just when something's bothering you and it can be tough because some issues are very delicate, mm -hmm. but you, your partners, you communicate, you've agreed to work together. And I think if you address the issue, um, then it can get taken care of. I think that's super important. That's right. Without cursing, without slamming doors, without walking away, without shutting down, sitting down, uh -huh maybe at the table, even during a meal and just say, can we talk about this? You yeah. know, I don't want to fight about it, but I just want to talk it through, you know, let, you know, you can talk first. I will not interrupt you. Then let me have a chance to speak and then kind of go from there. And, you know, if, if, if voices start rising, we can say, yeah, we agreed that we weren't going to, you know, raise our voices in this conversation. Cause I want to get through it and get to the other side so we can get over this conflict. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you always favorite. want to keep your eye on the prize. That's you right. You want to get back together so that you're the team. That's mm -hmm. why you're married or together. Yeah. Because you want to do this life thing together. Yeah. So you don't want to be a part that's the most stressful thing in the world when you and someone you love um, are not getting along. And I there love the ground rules thing. That's yeah. such a smart way to approach it. Yeah, for sure. Tell us more about the Connecting Kitchen and sort of how that all came to be. Yeah, so I had a very strained, terrible relationship with one of my three children, mm -hmm. um, my oldest, who's a son, and we could not get along. I mean, every conversation turned into an argument. We just didn't see things the same way, and I felt like I needed to guide him, mm -hmm. um, and I just was failing. Anyway, one day we started cooking together, and all of a sudden it wasn't about any issues. Hmm. We were just two people and, you know, he really needed to eat healthier. A lot mm -hmm. of his moodiness and difficulty, um, you know, the, how difficult it was to deal with him um, was because he was eating junk. So this was a nice way for us to get together, just make somewhat healthier versions of foods that he was already eating to kind of build more positive energy. Mm -hmm. And we learned to communicate and respect each other and work together and have conversations. And then mm -hmm. it turns out we could take that outside the kitchen too and still have those conversations. So that's how the Connecting Kitchen started. I felt like if this could work for the two of us, mm -hmm. this could work for anybody. I mean, he was 19 before we had a conversation that wasn't an argument. So that gives you an idea of yeah. how painful that journey um, was. So. Yeah. And then you started doing videos and then you started having classes in your home and then the pandemic hit and you were doing online classes where you had, uh, you know, up to 25, 40 people. I don't know how many on the zoom classes were people all over the world yeah. cooking with you. Yeah. That was pretty fun because I love to bring people together, not just moms and their kids, yeah. um, couples, and during the pandemic, there were a lot of lonely, isolated people. So, mm -hmm. you know, I'd have 25 or 30 people jump on and cook mm -hmm. with me. It was really special. And we did a matchmaking event. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we, we did, did a virtual matchmaking event where we invited singles to come join us to make mm -hmm. a meal and to yeah. chat. You know, it's yeah. the conversation. The food just brings you together, right? Everybody's right. going to the kitchen when there's a party or a holiday or whatever. It just, yeah. Great place I, to meet and connect. I agree. You know, I think a lot of people put a lot of pressure on themselves that the meal has to be so incredible that they just kind of shut down and lock down and then they end up just ordering in or something. And so I just want to encourage people that because that's how I felt. You know, it doesn't have to be grade A cooking. It doesn't have to be super fancy. You can make a nice meal out of five ingredients or less, even. It's just the sort of the thoughtfulness and the preparation in advance that'll bring you there. And then, um, you know, the, the conversation that happens around the table is really the most important thing. Yeah. One of my favorite strategies, if you want a little tip mm -hmm. is to just like pick five meals that you love that are simple and just keep mm -hmm. making them over and over again. 
yeah. you know, until you can't stand them anymore, but you'll get so fast at them and you can double them, you know, so that you don't have to cook every night. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of tricks because life is just busier, you know, it, long time ago there was a dedicated person often the mom who is making mm -hmm. all the food and doing all the shopping well life's just not like that right now so um we need to find strategies that work and there's lots of different things that you can do so that um you know it works for you but also you just if there's one thing that i wish for people it's that they appreciate what it means to have food, to eat healthy food, and to take care of themselves and be preventative about um, health care rather than reactive. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Do you have a favorite charity that 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 you work with or that you like? I do. My favorite charity, it's a local one here in Charlotte. It's the Community Culinary School. Mm -hmm. um, it's a second chance kitchen. Um, for people with barriers to entry into the workforce and mm -hmm. um, they teach people the skill of cooking and then they line them up with jobs so that they can take care of themselves increase their self-esteem feel like they're part of you know the working world a community um, that they belong and they have a purpose so I just think that's a beautiful charity excellent and where can people find you uh, you can find me at connectingkitchen.com or you can email me at uh, Meryl, M-E-R-Y-L, at connectingkitchen.com. I'm on Instagram, I'm not on there a lot, but it's Connecting Kitchen and I have a Facebook page as well. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Meryl. It has been a pleasure. Yes, I always love talking with you and I love cooking with you too. Thanks for listening to Love on the Go. I hope you join us on our next episode. You can make sure to know when it is by following us wherever you listen to podcasts. Also, if you enjoyed it, it'd be great if you left us a review. I'd appreciate it. In the meantime, to learn more about me and how my team can help you, visit carolinasmatchmaker.com. Until next time.